good morning, happy Wednesday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Now, we have a very unique setup for today and a chance for more violent tornadoes. We had eight tornadoes yesterday. One was very violent. Now, our storms are going to brew up real strong all the way towards noontime, and we will have chances on the front of this front line for southern Missouri, northern Arkansas, and it will go all the way through noontime. And then as this grows into the Ohio Valley, then you get a chance for some damage and winds. You see the little buckling out in the storm here, as well as a tornado threat. But as you go later in the evening, to where we lose our instability, mostly towards Ohio and northern Kentucky. And all your storms is going to be in the south, along this line for Kentucky, Tennessee Valley, and more southern. As well as southern Louisiana and southern Mississippi, as we go into later tonight and early this morning. But you still have damage and frontline winds that will be in Ohio Valley come 8 o'clock. Now all the way till midnight, you're going to have these problems with these frontline winds. But you're going to lose your instability, so you don't have the chances for the tornadoes. But you will have damage and winds that will keep coming through, and that's just as dangerous as a tornado. But as you go all the way till midnight, you can see that these storms are still in the south. You still have convection. You still have chances for tornadoes, especially with the shear. First, let me show you a little bit of what we're going into and what the perimeters are on this storm. Remember, you can always follow me. Links in the description to help save you time, as well as my Twitter and my Facebook as well if you want to help out. God bless every single one of you. May keep all of you safe. Now, Jordan Hall has recorded this, guys. This was a very violent tornado that they had yesterday. Very big meso scale, and it was a violent tornado. Very scary and large tornado. But you can see just how big and actually beautiful this system was, but it did create a very large and violent tornado. Look how big this was, and look how close it came to these houses. So do me a favor, link is in the description for this guy's channel and video. Go subscribe to this guy. He only has a thousand subscribers and he has such great content as this. And it literally went right past these homes. A huge and violent tornado. So Iowa definitely saw the worst of what we had to come yesterday. So for today, you do have chances for hail, especially in all this yellow. You have 15% chance and significant hail in all this black. All these lightning strikes bring a lot of large hail. Now, there is a big wind threat as well. You have a big 45% chance in this pink and significant wind in all this black with 30% chance in all this red. And don't forget this yellow. I'm showing you going to have some damage in frontline winds later this evening for the Ohio Valley. Plus your tornado threat, you have a big 2% over here as well as the northeast for today and this afternoon. You have the 5% in the brown, 10% in the yellow, significant chance for tornadoes in all this yellow, because that's where the black is. And you have a moderate section right here in this red. So here's your cities and your states that's in a tornado threat for today. With your significant severe being Indianapolis, Indiana, Memphis, Tennessee, St. Louis, Missouri, Little Rock, Arkansas, and Jackson, Mississippi as well as your 15% right here in the red, your 10% in the yellow, your 5% in the brown, and your 2% in the green. As well as your flash flooding, you have a big marginal in all this green all the way up towards Canada, and then you have this big slight risk that's going all the way up towards southern Michigan now, all the way down to Louisiana for flash flooding for today. Now, with your warm temperatures today, you do have a lot of instability, a lot of cape and lift all day long, but as you get towards this evening, you get little pockets to where it's not getting any instability, it's not getting any lift, especially for Ohio. Ohio, you all think you'll see tornadoes, but you will see straight line damage and winds out of this storm. Now you have storms brewing up all morning long, especially over here in Ohio Valley. But right here from Missouri is where you're going to start getting your shear on your storms. And some of these cells are going to start spreading out all across Missouri getting a lot of shear on them. And it is a lot of shear, and it is some nasty little storms moving through. That's all the way to 11 o'clock. And you can also see those storms that's moving through the Ohio Valley all the way till noontime. It don't have a lot of lift in that area. And that's mostly because way up aloft, you have a lot of cooler air, and that is sinking air, cold air, sinking air, warm air is rising air. And with the sinking air more dense, is putting a pocket up there that's traveling with it and is stopping it from getting too much lift for that area. That's why you don't have any lift, no cape values for that storm as it passes by. 
It pretty much leaves Ohio out of it until later on you will get some straight line damage and winds. I will show you. But as you keep going, you see the storms raises from Missouri, goes into southern Illinois, as well as northern Arkansas. And it is getting sheer on this big pocket of cells as it's moving from Missouri into southern Illinois by early this afternoon. A big nasty line. And then later on, it's going to spread out. You're going to get multiple chances. All these little cells has shear on them. All this white and red. These are all cells that have shear on them as it's passing through. Look at that color of that pink. Very nasty storms, especially this afternoon for Arkansas, western Kentucky, and western Tennessee with northern Mississippi. Now, as these storms move through this afternoon, you got this big front line right here going from Illinois to Indiana. You're going to get some straight line winds from that. And as you get to 5 and 6 o'clock, that's the last chance to get any kind of severe storms out of Ohio, as you can see, you lose a lot of your lift at that point, and it's just going to be regular frontline storms, straight line damage and winds, which is just as bad as a tornado at times anyway. It is going to be bad winds with a lot of damage, but you can tell that your cape is only for Kentucky, western Tennessee, and the south after 6 p.m., and it dies quickly after 8 p.m. Once you get to 9, you pretty much have nothing left. So 6 p.m., you still have your lift over here for the Tennessee, Kentucky Valley, you still have all your storms moving through, and it will go through all the way to Ohio. That's where you're going to get those straight line damage and winds. You don't have to lift to have tornadoes uh, without storms. It is going to be a little further southern. And as you go further in the evening, especially 11 o'clock, it is going to be gone. I think 9 o'clock is going to be the latest time to where you're going to get any kind of chance for tornadoes, and it's going to be a little more southern. But it's going to drop dramatically after that. And you can see with your helicity tracks, your wind direction change with height. That once you get to about 11 o'clock this morning, you get a nasty little long-lived cell in northern Arkansas. Starts going through southern Missouri. A couple of long-lived cells all through southern Missouri, all the way to 6 p.m. tonight. Then it's going to lower down. It's going to be a little bit maybe for southern Illinois, western Kentucky, a little bit of western Tennessee, northeast Arkansas, and a little bit for northern Mississippi all the way to 9 o'clock. As these storms go all evening long, you still have another chance early in the morning. You still have Cape. You still have lift just for the tip of Louisiana and the Gulf Coast states. And you got a chance for a long-lived cell to possibly pass through New Orleans going out into the Gulf of Mexico. But with these storms also brings the lightning strikes. You definitely have chances for lightning. Large hail come out of this all afternoon long. Then it switches once you go to 4 and 5 o'clock in the evening. It's only going to be for the south. You don't have to lift up here for these thunderstorms to be as fierce anymore. And it's just going to be for the south. Come 8, 9 o'clock, it's really going to be for southern Mississippi, southern Louisiana, and gone. You still got chances for straight line damage and winds, but you don't have the chances for the tornadoes after that or the hail. But the heaviest is definitely going to be right here in this region. Southern Illinois, southern Indiana, western Kentucky, western Tennessee, eastern Arkansas, northern Mississippi, and northern Alabama. And when you check what HRRR to see about damage and wind gush, you can see as it passes through this evening, you got chances for 50, even up to 60 miles per hour wind gust that's passing through these storms through Kentucky and Tennessee as it dies off. Not a lot of winds with it, but a NAM 3K does show that you will get 50 and up to 60 miles per hour wind gusts with these frontline storms that's coming through Indiana and Ohio. And you can see clearly these storms that are coming through, you are losing your lift for getting any chances for tornadoes, but you still have chances for damage and winds. So just be aware, you don't have the chances for the tornadoes because you don't have your lift, but you do have chances for damage and winds as that passes by. So as we go into 9 and 10 o'clock, you're getting storms passing by Springfield, Missouri. Then it goes towards St. Louis as you get towards noontime. And you can see the bowing out in that storm right there, as well as these hail cores that are in them. So just be aware, you have chances for large hail all afternoon long. But you can see that coming right past St. Louis. So be aware you could have some damage and winds that come with that. Some damage and wind gusts. Then as you go towards 2 o'clock, then it's going to stretch out towards Indianapolis, Indiana. While you still got this very long line of storms putting straight line winds. A lot of nasty hail cores with it as well. And your chances for tornadoes. But once you go into this evening, then you can see the pocket really gets lost for Ohio. But everybody else has a chance to still because you still have to lift all the way from southern Indiana, across Tennessee, Kentucky, all the way to the south with all this nasty line of hail cores. Look at all these hail cores that is in this system as it passes by. 
And then it's going to keep on going towards Indianapolis all night long towards 8 and 9 o'clock. Around 10 o'clock, it will be leaving you and going towards Ohio, towards Columbus. But at the same time, you still got them passing through Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi. But I show 5 o'clock is really a strong time when you have a lot of nasty hail course that is passing up in all of this storms. A lot of nasty hail cores, good chances for large damage and hail just right where National Weather Service sees it, guys. And then as it goes towards later this afternoon, 7 and 8 o'clock, you're going to lose a lot of your lift up here in Ohio Valley, but you still have it for the Tennessee, Kentucky Valley down to northern Mississippi. Still chances for tornadoes, but it drops dramatically from 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock. Then you can see you still got chances for frontline damage and winds for Ohio and Kentucky, while you still get nasty storms with hail cores for Mississippi and for Louisiana. But all this drops dramatically once you hit 8 o'clock and 9 o'clock. After that, you got regular thunderstorms, and look how quickly it dissipates through the night. And I really wanted to put this video out so you can know what to expect with these damaging winds, these bad storms, and the chances for these violent tornadoes today. I have to go today. My kids have testing, so I'm trying to put out as best as I can for you guys. I think the main threat that we have is going to be this tornado threat, and then later on, it is going to be the damage and winds. So God bless all of you. Keep you very safe from this storm. Please go show that guy some love on YouTube. Only 1,000 subscribers, and he has content like that. That's crazy. Please go show him some love. Go subscribe to him. He's a great guy from what I can tell. I don't know what's in his heart as far as the Bible and everything goes, but he is bringing good content on your weather for what you need. So please go check him out. At the same time, I always spread love and cheer on this channel as much as I can. But a lot of you don't know that God is very severe on those that teach the Bible because he don't want us to lead anybody astray. It's better to put a heavy weight on our neck into the bottom of the ocean rather than what's going to happen to us if we lead somebody astray. So I don't want you to think it's always good things, that everything's fine and dandy with no consequence to do my job correctly in teaching you parts of the Bible is to let you know there is consequence as well for not following God. So today I want to read 1 John chapter 1. That which was from the beginning which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie, and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanseth us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. Amen. You must repent for your sins. That is the first step to moving closer to our Father. You have to repent. Some of us do it every day. I know I do it lots of times. I fumble just like everybody else. But when you fall, you must repent. Just one time, don't save you forever. Whoever taught you that is a lie. I know it's harsh, but it can't all be fine and dandy. It needs to be the truth. If you have not repented for your sins, do this in private. God loves a relationship. He wants it in privacy. Go in a room, close the door, get on your knees, and ask God for forgiveness for your sins. And he will. He will lift you up. He will wipe away everything 
and you would have done it correctly. But to think that just knowing God is, is your Savior, just knowing Jesus Christ died for you, it's not enough to get you into heaven. And a lot of people think it is, and it is not. That's why it's going to be so much gnashing with teeth. Because people think they're going to get it, and they're not. You must repent for your sins. And that's the truth. Have a blessed day today. God bless every single one of you. In all glory. All power. All honor. Does go to Yahweh. God of Jacob. Our Father. And he will forgive you. Don't let pride hold you back. Don't let anything hold you back. Because in those times, nobody's going to be there for you. Not your parents, not your brother, your friends, nobody. It's just you and God. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah, guys. Be very safe today. I think we got a big tornado threat today. God bless you all.